Consumer grade detailing products versus professional grade detailing products. Do they provide the same user experience? Do they provide the same level of performance? Do they provide the same level of results? So we're gonna talk about that in this video. So by consumer grade products, we mean products that are available at your local auto parts store or big box store. So the Walmarts of this world, the AutoZone and all that kind of stuff. And there are brands like Turtle Wax, uh, you can have Adams polishes, there's Griot's Garage, there's Meguiar's, uh, there's Armor All, there's a bunch of brands that are available at more accessible prices for those who are budget conscious. Of course, we live in a time uh, where it's difficult financially for many people in countries around the world. So it is interesting to find good value for money. And then you have professional grade products. So there are counterparts uh, like Gion, there's uh, PNS, there's also CarPro, there's G-Technic. There's a bunch of brands that are more either prosumer or aimed at car detailing professionals. Now, again, do they offer the same level of experience, the same performance, the same results? You're gonna see all of that in a demo in this video. And to do so, I enlisted the help of a good friend of mine. He's Phil from Miranda Detailing. So he's a professional detailer in Virginia, uh, in the USA. He has a business with his wife and he details vehicles professionally. So what I asked him to do is go to your local auto parts store, pick some products, tools, and equipment for like roughly under 50 bucks and see if you can get the same results and performance and give us your thoughts. So what a professional car detailer thinks of the uh, consumer grade, more inexpensive options out there. Uh, by the way, don't worry, I'll leave all the links to the tools, products, and equipment in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Also, go ahead and give Phil from Miranda Detailing some love. Go check out his YouTube videos if you plan on becoming a professional detailer or if you're a pro detailer and you want more tips and tricks. He does some great stuff, some great work. He does great things for the detailing community and you guys know I love to share my platform to those out there who have perhaps smaller channels but I wanna help them grow and gain new audiences. So show him some love, tell him, Pan the Organizer sends you. Check out his videos. Again, I'll leave his channel linked in the description under this video. So without further ado, Phil take it away. What's up, Pan? Thank you for having me on the show, and I want to thank your viewers as well, and I hope you enjoy this. My name is Phil. My wife and I own Miranda Detailing, and we're professional detailers here in Richmond, Virginia. So today's going to be an interesting video. I am going to be using some of the cheapest products that I could find at my local Walmart and use them on a professional level and see what results we can get from them. Now, I want to compare these products because on a daily basis, we're using professional grade products and tools. So will it make a difference if we use these cheap cheaper products, but in the same way that we wash a vehicle professionally. Let's find out. To give you a rundown of some of the products that we bought. These are very basic. I didn't include any type of deconning or clay barring because what I'm really focusing on is a maintenance wash, a simple wash and wax. That's it. So here's what we picked up and I spent less than $50 buying all this stuff. That may differ depending on where you are and what products you find. I was able to keep it around that $50 mark. With the exception of buying these brushes here, these tools will last you much, much longer than a product will because of course you're using up product. We have a cheap wash and wax product from Armorall. We have the Armorall Extreme Tire Shine, which you can use on tires and trim. We have the Turtle Wax, wax and dry. So this will be our protection product, which we can put on pretty much everything, the glass, the paint, even exterior plastic. Now this product here is Spray 9. This is a degreaser and cleaner. We're gonna use that for the wheels and the tires, and then a very cheap, basic glass cleaner. Now, as far as tools, I have a really cheap wash mitt. This is around $5. We have a pretty cheap little wheel woolly brush here that we're going to use for the wheelbarrows. We have another cheap brush that we're gonna use for the face of the wheels and the tires. We also picked up these really cheap microfibers. They're soft, but they're pretty thin. And I think this was an eight pack for around five-ish dollars or so. And then we have this little wash bucket, which does come with its own little grit guard, which is kind of cool. And it actually stays in the bucket because it has these little plastic nodules here. So it keeps it in the bucket. That's actually a nice feature. Good job. All right, let's get to washing. Now, like I said, I am going to wash this like I usually do as a professional detailer, which does mean using a pressure washer. You could just use a hose, but I wanna see how the products work on a professional level. Now I am using a separate bucket for the wheels. Again, you can just buy another bucket if you wanted to do that. But this is not necessarily about the entire process from A to Z and all of the products and tools used. This is just giving you a simple idea 
This is just giving you an idea of using some cheap products, but in a professional setting. So there's gonna be some steps here and some things here that I don't do in a professional level, or maybe you don't do in a consumer level. The point is the product, so focus on that. Now with the shampoo here, I am gonna put this in our foam cannon. Put these away for now, we're gonna focus on the wheel cleaning. Now for the foam can, I'm gonna put just a few ounces of the shampoo. I'm not being too exact here, I can kind of eyeball two to three ounces. Now I don't necessarily need to foam the bucket because this is my foam on the vehicle. So I am not needing to do a traditional two bucket method. This is just my method, it's my way. If you wanna check out our channel, I explain why I wash this way and how it's actually very safe and very effective. And the pre-wash part, is the most important. And I am gonna show you that in just a moment. So let's get the vehicle ready to wash. So before I go into my contact wash, what I'm going to do is our traditional APC rinse. Now I'm using spray nine, which is very, very strong. So I am going to dilute it about one to four in this little bottle, and I'm gonna use this to pre-wash. Now our vehicle has not been washed in a couple of weeks. It is actually kind of gross. I just had my tires changed out, so I do need to scrub these down really well. We definitely have some bugs, both in the bumper, in the windshield, in the mirrors. Now, because I'm not in direct sunlight and it's not really hot today, what I'm going to do is spray down the vehicle dry, not pre-rinsing. Again, this is diluted. It is safe to do this. If you are unsure, then simply wet the vehicle down first. Now you can instantly see this stuff working. It starts to pull this grime off really, really quick. I'm also gonna spray the wheels and tires down. Basically, this is a touchless pre-washing. I'm not gonna scrub anything just yet. You can really see it pulling the junk off the paint. I have to say, this stuff is very good and I actually do use it on a professional level. This does have antibacterial and virus killing properties, so it eats away the bugs. And it is very cheap for how good of a chemical it really is. Because you can use it on the interior as well. It does a great job of cleaning carpets and upholstery. Now we're focusing on all the bottom portions because those are the dirtiest. Again, some of the dirtiest areas on the back of the vehicle. Now a word of caution, when using a degreaser like that, you are weakening your protection, not necessarily stripping it 100%. So for basic maintenance wash and waxes, go gently with this step. Only do it if the vehicle is really dirty. If you don't need to pre-wash, don't. Simply rinse it, foam it, and contact wash it. But that is up to your discretion and how bad the vehicle really is. Can you see that clear line right there? Yeah, that's with no scrubbing at all. You're getting the majority of that junk right off the paint safely before you contact wash. So before we even contact wash, the vehicle is very, very clean. Our protection is still holding strong. I actually have a synthetic sealant on here that's still holding on really well after a couple of months. Even the wheels and tires, yeah, they look pretty decent without even scrubbing them, but we are gonna scrub them further. So let's use our foam cannon with the shampoo and we're gonna foam everything up. That actually produces some pretty nice foam. Not bad at all. Now I'm also gonna foam up the wheel bucket. This just adds extra lubrication and cleaning power. Now this is optional, but you can foam up your wash bucket if you want. I'm using this more as a rinse bucket, but again, for added lubrication, totally optional. So let's see how this wash mitt does. 
Already, I'm not a fan of the wash mitt only because it's, it's really, really floppy. I want a little bit more structure. Eh, but that's personal choice. As far as slickness goes, even though it's foamy, it's not the slickest shampoo. Now, again, I'm only using one mitt here. Usually I use two mitts, one for the top, one for the bottom. But in this case, I'm going very, very cheap here and trying to use minimal products and tools. But as far as cleaning power, the bugs have been softened up and removing with relative ease. Not, not too bad at all. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with its cleaning ability. Now I'm gonna clean all the top surfaces and then go back and hit all the bottom surfaces. I'm not going all the way to the bottom just yet. Only because again, it's the dirtiest part of the vehicle. For the wheels and tires, again, I'm just using Spray 9, but I'm gonna be using it straight this time because I want some more cleaning power. I have always been impressed by this product because it is so cheap. It works incredibly well as a disinfectant and a heavy duty degreaser, and it can be used inside or out. And you can find this in one gallon or even five gallon form on Amazon. These little like wheel woolly type style brushes are pretty nice, but they're a little thick and sometimes they get stuck but they do clean pretty well and they are nice and soft. Just not a fan of how they get stuck like that. In the... There we go. Now you can get a separate tire brush and a separate wheel brush because sometimes you can cross contaminate. It's totally up to you. In this video, I'm doing this just because I'm keeping things cheap. But professionally, I'd rather have different brushes. A dedicated tire brush, a dedicated wheel brush, and even a dedicated wheel well brush, and brushes to get into these little areas too. But again, when you do that, you are making things a little bit more expensive as well. And those tools are gonna be more the professional grade type of tool. So does this clean well? Yes, it does. You can get away with just using that product and those two tools. Is it the safest way? No, not really. Not really recommended. I would definitely invest in proper tools, but again, you are making things a little bit more expensive. So keep that in mind. So the vehicle is clean. The paint is clean. The tires look excellent. The wheels are really cleaned well. And the paint is still beading from the protection that we put on it a while ago. And this is a wash and wax, so it does have a little bit of polymer protection, whatever they put in here. So maybe that's also adding to the beading. But overall, it looks really, really good. Now let's use these microfibers. They are very, very thin. I mean, they're soft feeling, but they're super thin. So already I'm not quite a fan of that. And I got these microfibers instead of a big drying microfiber because I wanted to be versatile. I wanted to use these towels for drying, but also be able to use them for interiors or pretty much anything else. That's why I went with these. Again, keeping things in a low budget. Now the Turtle Wax Wax and Dry, I've used a product like this before from Turtle Wax. They have a couple of different variations and I've actually been very happy with these products. So I'm going to spray this onto the paint and dry with the towels at the same time. Oh, I don't like these. So thin. I mean, they dry well because they're brand new, but they're just so thin. In fact, maybe what I'll do is double these up. There. That's a little better. So they do dry well, but they're just so thin and flimsy feeling. And they are soft, so I'm not worried about scratching necessarily. Just the quality of the thickness, the plushness of the towel is just not there. But they are very, very soft. So maybe a couple of uses you can get out of these and that's pretty much it. And then probably downgraded to interior towels. But the drying capability of the towels and this product together work really well. If I had a, a better high quality drying towel, it would be better but the product does a really good job of breaking up the water tension, helping the towel to absorb as well, leaving the paint very, very slick and dry. You can also spray this on the glass and it's gonna add protection onto your glass. 
And I know this seems kind of counterproductive because we're gonna be using the glass cleaner on the glass, but if this does well enough, then you don't need to use the glass cleaner. And already these towels are just saturated, so I have to wring them out now every panel or so. Not a fan of the towels for drying. I would definitely recommend a professional drying towel. It will last longer and it's better for the paint as well because it is softer and plusher. Plusher, is that a word? Plush. More plush, most plushedest, the plushiest. Now you could use a blower for this, a leaf blower or you know, a professional blower. And that would make the job go much faster, but you are adding a couple of hundred dollars to this whole process. So again, keeping it on a budget. Now I do like this wax and dry. It's actually a pretty good product. It's very, very affordable. I really like products from Turtle Wax. Their new line of products are actually pretty good. Oh, these towels suck. So these towels, meh, I would not recommend them. They're soft, maybe use them for interior only, but for the exterior, they're just, they're so thin. They absorb water well enough at first and they quickly get saturated. So for drying towels, nah, not a good recommendation. Interior, I definitely use them for interior. So as far as wash mitts go, it does the job, but it's very floppy. It's not as plush as I would want. There's a lot of room here for more fibers to go into. I would have liked to see it a little bit more dense compared to a professional wash mitt like this, which actually has some good backbone to it. So it's not just floppy like this. And it's very, very, very plush. The dirt particles will go in. They're not just gonna go on the surface and scratch against your paint. So a plush wash mitt like this is definitely a plus. This, meh, it did the job, but I wouldn't recommend it for a professional. Now for glass cleaning, this stuff I've actually read about and I've never used it myself. Glass cleaners, well, they're kind of a dime a dozen. If they're an alcohol-based glass cleaner, they are usually pretty good. So I'm gonna use the same towels, uh, same type of towels, not the same drying towels, of course. They're, they're new and dry and I have two of them. So I like to spray onto the towel itself and not onto the glass just because of overspray purposes. Ooh, I like the trigger on this. Work in the cleaner with one towel. If you want it a little bit more saturated, you can. Sometimes you need a little bit more cleaner. And actually it's doing, it's doing okay. It's actually cleaning up pretty well. What I'm looking for is streaking and any residue left behind. So it's really hard to focus up in the glass here. So I'm gonna keep this towel here, but we have a little bit of bugs still on the windshield. And that cleaned it off with ease. So the glass cleaner, yeah, that's a win. It works really well on a professional level it would work. The one thing I don't like about this is the smell. It's very perfumey and I, I don't like that. A lot of the professional glass cleaners do have some scents to it, uh, but this one, I'm just not a fan of the scent. It does work really well. It is ammonia free, so it can work on tinted windows with no problem for the interior, of course. These towels on glass, again, meh, not my best choice for glass. Now for tires and wheels, I'm gonna use the wax and dry on the wheels themselves. And I'm gonna grab the drying towels that I use for the paint because I am not gonna use these on the paint again anyway. And I am gonna just dry down these wheels with the other towel. So the tire is looking really clean, still a little bit wet, but that's okay. To really get these dry properly, you wanna blow dry them. But we're gonna use the Armorall Extreme Tire Shine. Let's see how this stuff works. Now on the bottle itself, it actually says how to apply this. And I'm gonna do it onto one tire because I don't like the way that it tells me to apply this and I'm not going to follow the directions. I know from experience that these directions are counterintuitive. For one, it says to spray four to six inches away from the tire and basically just drench the tire in it, not using an applicator. You're gonna get a lot of overspray because of that, and I don't like that. So you're gonna have to wipe down the paint and maybe even the glass. And usually tire dressing is done at the end of the detail, so there's potential for that messiness. This also says to do two passes around the tire. That's a lot of product. And let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, don't wipe it, and any drips they say will disappear, leaving a brilliant shine. Not a lot of information on this product about if it's water-based or solvent-based, silicone-based, whatever the case is. So I really don't know what's in this product. I'm assuming it is a silicone-based, maybe even a solvent-based type of dressing. So we'll see in about 15 minutes. My preferred method is using a brush like this. Spray it onto the brush, so you're controlling the overspray, and then apply it onto the tire. I don't want to saturate it so that we have drips because drips can actually lead to making the tire just look really, really bad. 
So if it's too wet, which this stuff is very, very runny, I'm not a fan of that. I like a thicker dressing for tires so that it clings a little bit better to the tire. This is very watery. You can use this on trim also because it is a dressing, but I don't want to put it on my trim right now. I'm just focusing on the tires. Now this is pretty wet, so I don't want drips here. I'm going to mop up around the tread because it's just dripping around it. Again, I prefer a thicker product for tires. So this is initial application about two times around. It's pretty shiny, it's pretty wet, and that's not my usual go-to. So it's recommended application is a no-no for me. I'm gonna apply it with a brush the way that I usually do it as a professional. So the vehicle is now clean and protected and looking pretty decent. How do these products stack up to professional grade products? Well, there are some here that I would actually use on a professional level, one being the Spray 9. This stuff is incredible. As a disinfectant and interior cleaner, it's amazing. The wax and dry work pretty well also. You don't wanna be buying bottles like this all the time, so get your products in gallon form or larger. But this product did work really well. As far as the wash and wax, I was actually surprised at its foaming capability. It foams up really well. It doesn't have the slickness that I would want, but its cleaning power and a little bit of the protection that it left behind was relatively decent. And again, at least you can buy this in a larger form. Now, if you're starting out detailing, you know, you could use this, but you are going to want to graduate to better products that have more slickness, more lubrication. But cleaning power and foaming, this actually did okay. Now this stuff, I am just not a fan of at all. I don't like its application. It's very, very watery. As far as durability, I guess time will tell, we'll see. I would like to actually drive this for a couple of days and see if it slings, but I don't like the application of this stuff at all. The little bucket here is actually pretty decent and the grit guard in there is a nice addition as well. Buckets and things like that on a professional grade level, that really doesn't make that much of a difference at all. What makes the difference are some products but especially techniques. So if you want to learn about proper techniques for detailing on a professional level, then check out our YouTube channel. Pan will have it linked down below. So I gotta get all this stuff packed up and the car pulled in the garage because we have a full day tomorrow. Again, thank you, Pan. Thank you, viewers. We'll see you next time. So guys, I think that was an awesome video. Thank you, Phil. So check out his YouTube channel, Phil from Miranda Detailing. I'll leave the channel linked in the description. Go and show him some love. Again, I'll leave the links to the tools, products, and equipment in the description under the video. If you guys enjoyed this, by the way, smash the thumbs up button, share this video with family and friends or anybody who might benefit from this information. And uh, if you want me to do a future video on this kind of topic, let me know. What next do you want us to compare uh, in the consumer versus pro grade? Something that you might find interesting. Drop a comment in the comment section. In the meantime, guys, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll see you on the next one.